Hello everyone, I hope that you had a chance to go through the lectures that I uh, gave last time and you were able to go through the Swern oxidation and the Pumerer reaction that we discussed using sulfur compounds namely sulfoxides and also with selenoxides. So in today's lecture what I am going to describe is uh, oxidations using organoselenium compounds and also selenium dioxide. But first briefly we will have a recap of what we did last time in a very short while. For example, uh, what we did was we took an a enone say for example cyclopentenone and when we did the cuprate addition uh, and uh, then trapped the enolate with the selenium electrophile, we got this uh, phenyl and selenophenyl uh, substrate compound and intermediate in a trans fashion which upon oxidation led to the elimination of selenoxide. Now this selenoxide elimination is uh, done at relatively low temperature like for example 10 degrees and on the other hand very similar but with some difference uh, the use of sulfoxide is observed that is when you take a sulfoxide of this type the example that I mentioned last time when it undergoes an elimination it has to be a syn elimination because uh, for a compound to undergo syn elimination the sulfoxide here this particular sulfoxide and hydrogen that is supposed to eliminate this hydrogen here and the sulfoxide they have to be syn to each other and then the elimination occurs. Now, this particular sulfoxide elimination takes place at a relatively high temperature as you can see here approximately 80 degrees which is the boiling point of benzene. So the difference between the two of them is uh, the temperature and therefore many a times selenoxide is uh, preferred over sulfoxide eliminations. At the same time we would also look at the Pumerer rearrangement uh, and also combine the two in the next uh, slide. For example, the uh, Pumerer rearrangement uh, which is observed with sulfoxides uh, is also observed with selenoxide. So I will not spend much time on it because we did it last time nevertheless the sulfoxide here for example reacts with an acetic anhydride and therefore one can write the resonance structure of the sulfoxide in this fashion here and the nucleophilic oxygen here reacts with the electrophilic acetic anhydride to form this intermediate from where the acetate ion picks up the, the, the proton from here and that allows the, uh, the elimination to take place to form this particular sulfonium ion and this sulfonium ion then is reacted with a nucleophile. In this particular case acetate is the nucleophile. So when the reaction occurs you get an alpha acetoxy sulfide or say uh, alpha functionalized sulfide. So 
So, this is a very important uh, substrate because one can carry out the preparation of a number of such uh, sulphides which have uh, different kinds of nucleophiles attached. And now depending on the uh, chemistry that one can think about of this sulphide, one can prepare a number of important uh, target molecules. Uh, target molecules. So, this kind of sulfoxide based fumarole rearrangement followed by nucleophilic attack as well as selenium based uh, fumarole rearrangement followed by uh, nucleophilic attack is an important development that we discussed last time. Now, what are the ways to make organoselenium compounds? One is of course, uh, as shown here that one can take uh, acetylene for example, phenyl uh, methyl acetylene and if one uses uh, phenyl seleno trifluoroacetate then you basically what you have is a source of phenyl uh, SE plus and of course, you have OCO CF3 minus as a leaving group. When this triple bond reacts uh, with the selenium, it reacts in a Markovnikov fashion and therefore, the positive charge is formed on this particular carbon atom and the selenium comes onto this uh, carbon atom and then potassium hydroxide attaches to this um, end of the triple bond and finally, the carbonyl group comes in here and the selenide comes in here. So, this is one of the easier ways of getting a selenium compound adjacent to a ketone starting from a triple bond. Now, if one carries out uh, oxidation or a with hydrogen peroxide or any other oxidant, we can easily make the corresponding selenoxide oxide which undergoes elimination to form this alpha beta unsaturated ketone. Alternatively, one can also take the enolate of uh, this type, this kind enolate and directly treat with uh, this particular uh, selenoyl chloride and get the corresponding selenoxide here directly without the use of any oxidizing agent which upon as you can see that you require only lower, lower than 25 degrees temperature to let the compound undergo uh, selenium oxide elimination and the same substrate is formed readily. Now, we can take the similar enolate and react with selenyl chloride instead of selenoyl chloride and then introduce and make the selenide which of course, again you can go via the same sequence of reactions which we saw earlier to form this particular enone. One can also take uh, uh, this ketone instead of the enolate and treat with the phenyl SeCl, phenyl selenyl chloride. This particular substrate is actually existing like for example, as a enol and this enol will then react as a nucleophile at this end of the double bond to introduce selenide at this particular carbon atom. And then uh, uh, one can uh, carry out the same sequence of reaction to form the alpha beta unsaturated ketone. This uh, uh, reaction here is from alpha halo for example, here one can take chlorine or bromine any such leaving group and then have a nucleophilic selenide here for example, sodium, sodium phenyl selenide at this stage here which can directly attack the selenium phenyl 
uh, this selenide here can directly attack at this and let the halide go and one can form the corresponding uh, alpha selenoketone which gives under the same conditions alpha beta and such a ketone. So these are various ways by which one can carry out the reactions uh, of introducing uh, selenium uh, bond or selenium atom uh, or seleno group at the carbon atom of uh, organic substrates. Now the mildness of the procedure is very much justified by the following examples. For example, if one takes uh, this kind of uh, this kind of substrate here which now we can use LDA and react uh, with phenyl acid bromide here for example as a selenium source. So obviously you will first generate an anion here with the LDA which is lithium diisopropyl amide and react with the phenyl SEBr to introduce the SE phenyl group here which upon oxidation with hydrogen peroxide will allow the elimination of course in a syn fashion the syn elimination will occur syn elimination to form this particular compound. As one can expect that we have uh, a double bond which is in conjugation with the ketone and uh, of course this will first form because selenide was present at this particular carbon atom. However, this particular compound can also undergo uh, easy elimination on, on this side or isomerization on this side. It can undergo an isomerization on this side because here now the double bond is in conjugation with the phenyl ring. So this particular substrate is very easily isomerizable to the more stable beta gamma. So this is the alpha position and this is the beta position and this is the gamma position. So one can uh, do such a uh, isomerization if one needs it. However, the mildness of the procedure that means this particular elimination takes place as, as I mentioned earlier below 25 degrees centigrade. So such a temperature gives mostly this particular substrate easily but if the temperature is increased then one will isomerize to the beta gamma isomer. So this is the mildness of the procedure which is justified. Now another substrate which is uh, uh, very interesting is this uh, ene dione. This is an ene dione, ene dione. Oh, now this ene dione as one can see easily that uh, this can uh, undergo uh, very easy attack by a nucleophile onto this particular carbon atom mainly because there are two electron withdrawing groups uh, which are present and they are in conjugation with one double bond. So one double bond and two electron withdrawing groups makes this particular carbon atom here very very electrophilic. This carbon atom is highly electrophilic and therefore very sensitive to the nucleophiles present in the reaction medium. So if the reaction temperature is relatively high then such nucleophilic attacks will easily happen uh, on in during the reaction. So the mildness of the procedure that means the elimination of the selenoxide occurs at less than 25 degrees centigrade and therefore formation of such a ene dione which is sensitive to nucleophiles can be readily prepared. Now what are the synthetic applications? For example, a good synthetic application of it is 
in the preparation of such uh, interesting and of course complicated substrate. Final product. This requires a regio and stereoselective hydroxymethylation. This is the hydroxy methylated uh, uh, group, the hydroxymethyl group that has been introduced onto this particular uh, substrate. Now uh, if one starts with this uh, particular tricyclic ketone, one can easily see that if one wants to introduce a uh, hydroxy methyl group at this particular carbon atom, at this uh, carbon atom here, then one also has to see that this carbon is also which is alpha to the carbonyl group available for functionalization. Therefore, one has to do something to uh, kind of uh, protect this particular carbon atom. Now if one can look at it, this carbon atom here, this carbon atom here is sterically more hindered because of this group here or this ring here and therefore anything that one has to do will occur here. So one of the ways by which this reaction was carried out and which is reported in 1996 in the Journal of American Chemical Society is that first the react selenium was introduced at this carbon which is what uh, is uh, required to be done to introduce a double bond here. And once the double bond is introduced, this side of the carbonyl group is now blocked. There is no proton that is available to be removed. And therefore, once this particular enone is formed, the LDA lithium diisopropyl amide would deprotonate this proton here, this proton which is uh, which is alpha to the carbonyl group and then with the help of an electrophile such as formaldehyde one can introduce the CH2OH group. Now one can ask this question here that this particular proton is alpha to the carbonyl group at the same time this particular hydrogen is alpha to the ester group also. But this proton is next to a carbonyl group whereas this proton is next to an ester group and therefore the acid uh, acidity of the proton here is higher than the acidity of this proton. Therefore deprotonation will occur preferentially at this carbon atom and then one introduces the CH2OH group and since this particular CC bond or this entire six member ring here is beta oriented and therefore the CH2OH group is alpha uh, introduced. Once this uh, addition or the substitution of the CH2OH group has occurred at the alpha position next to the carbonyl group, then the hydrogenation is carried out with the hydrogen and platinum here to saturate the double bond and get back the hydrogen here which is what was present in the beginning. So this is a very interesting application of a regio and stereoselective hydroxymethylation. Regio because you are carrying out the reaction on one side of the carbonyl group here and stereo because you are getting uh, alpha hydroxymethylation. Now uh, the next sub class of uh, oxidations that we are going to look at is with oxidations uh, of organic substrates uh, using selenium dioxide. Now there are two things that we are going to look at. One is of course oxidation at the uh, 
allylic and benzylic positions with selenium dioxide uh, as I have shown here that you can carry out the oxidation at uh, uh, allylic position here or at the benzylic position here. Now what are the ways by which we can directly introduce a hydroxy group here? One way of doing it is with selenium dioxide. Now there is a very interesting review which is uh, in the in uh, published in 2013 in the journal synthesis on allylic oxidations using selenium dioxide. There is another way of uh, introducing a carbonyl group alpha to the uh, ketones which is also by using selenium dioxide. So we will take up these uh, transformations uh, now one by one. The, the first one that we take is oxidation uh, at the allylic and benzylic positions using selenium dioxide. Now there are uh, certain rules which uh, are uh, published in this organic reactions in 1976 which is what is generally observed when the reactions are carried out. Uh, for example, uh, for example when we have an oxidation to carry out on a olefin of this type which has three substitutions on the double bond. So the first rule says oxidation always occurs at the di substituted side of the double bond provided there is non bridged alkenyl hydrogen available. So uh, oxidation occurs either at at this sub side of the double bond or on this side of the double bond but not on this side. That means the oxidation always occurs at the di substituted side of the double bond. Obviously when we think about it we, we have to uh, think that the oxidation occurs uh, to give hydroxy group attachment in many cases uh, trans to this particular methyl group for steric reason. Oxidation of one uh, alkyl cyclohexenes for example here of this type uh, of this kind the oxidation occurs in the ring rather than on the side chain. That means oxidation occurs here rather than taking place onto this particular carbon atom. So that means this is not formed, this is not formed. So it is always on the, on the ring that is what the introduction of the hydroxy group occurs. According to the third rule, oxidation never occurs at the bridgehead position and that is because of the Brett's rule. If we take a compound of this kind which has two bridgehead uh, allylic hydrogens which are symmetrical, we expect the oxidation with selenium dioxide to give this particular allylic hydroxy compound. But since this hydroxy group is at the bridgehead position, we do not get this molecule. That is because when selenium dioxide reacts with this uh, bridgehead based compound, then what we expect is to form a selenium intermediate of this type where carbon selenium bond has formed between this carbon and this selenium followed by the removal of a proton from here which leads to the formation of a double bond at the bridgehead. Now this particular selenium intermediate then undergoes rearrangement to allow the introduction of the hydroxy group at the bridgehead position and the double bond is uh, returned to the original 
position. That means this particular compound, when it undergoes oxidation with selenium dioxide, the allylic hydrogen uh, is replaced by the hydrox group at the bridgehead position. But because the intermediate that is formed has a double bond at the bridgehead position, which according to the Brett's rule, it is not allowed, and therefore the oxidation never gives this type of allylic hydroxy group where there is hydroxy group at the bridgehead position. According to the fourth rule, the preferred order of reactivity is that the secondary allylic hydrogen that is of CH2 type is oxidized over say uh, allylic methyl hydrogen which is oxidized preferentially over allylic tertiary hydrogen. Say if we take an example of this kind where there are two possibilities. This is allylic secondary hydrogen and this is allylic methyl hydrogen. If this gets oxidized, we get this particular hydroxy group at this position. And if this position gets oxidized, then we get this allylic hydroxy molecule. Now, if we see the intermediates that are formed, then we expect that based on similar type of mechanistic consideration as we discussed above, we expect the formation of this selenium intermediate in which as we can see that the double bond is at the terminal position and that eventually leads to the hydroxy group at the terminal position. Whereas, if we take uh, this secondary hydrogen into consideration, then the intermediate involving a selenium species that is formed is this particular intermediate, in which, as one can see, that the double bond is 1 2 di substituted and that leads to the formation of the allylic hydroxy group like this. Now, between the two selenium intermediates, one can easily see that this particular selenium intermediate is more stable than this and therefore, the formation of the allylic uh, uh, hydroxy group involving the secondary allylic hydrogen is allowed and this does not form. In a similar fashion, if we take another example in which we have now three possibilities, th there are two methyl allyl hydrogens and one secondary allyl hydrogen. According to the first rule, the more substituted side of the double bond is preferentially oxidized than the less substituted side. Now, these are the two more substituted sides uh, of the double bond and between the two of them, this is secondary CH2 which is allylic and this is the methyl allylic hydrogen. Obviously, according to the fourth rule that we discussed just now, oxidation here occurs and that happens proceeding via this particular selenium intermediate, which is obviously a uh, tri substituted double bond and therefore, that leads to the formation of this particular allylic hydroxy compound. Uh, I think you should read these whatever I have told today and uh, we will uh, discuss more aspects of this uh, selenium dioxide based oxidation next time. Thank you.